as a creative person, a mindset that I despise is one that basically says, welcome to everything established, where if it's not established, it's crap. Basically, if someone asks questions, they go, what if this, what if that? That unless they're someone like Stephen Hawking or some professor somewhere that has a bunch of backing, that you can't ask certain kinds of questions, otherwise, well, um, that's not an idea worth entertaining because it hasn't been established. You know, this person over here could come up with an idea that, that uh, Stephen Hawking might come up with, but this person over here is never, ever, ever taken seriously or considered at all because, well, they're not Stephen Hawking. I think that's a load of crap. I think that's awful. And that same sort of thing is done with the arts, music. Well, that's not a valid style unless it's been established. It has to have become popular in some way for it to be a valid style. If someone comes up with a new term for a new style of music, well, unless, unless that's been established, well, that's not a valid way to break apart music. Same thing happens with art. And, as, as I'm describing in this video, this happens with any kind of idea. And do you know who is at the forefront of these types of people pushing for those types of ideas? It's atheists. Now, I'm not saying all atheists do this, but a large number of people do. Now, I understand that you're trying to preemptively block bullshit ideas. Well, block ideas individually on their own merit, not off of just because it's not established. I mean, if someone tries to say the moon is made of cheese, it's pretty easy to disprove that. You know, if someone says that the earth is flat, that's pretty easy to disprove that. But if someone talks about some sort of spiritual concept that does not mesh with the already established religions, and it's something that just generally hasn't been established anywhere, well, let's not take that seriously. I mean, religions do this same thing. Religions say, you can't ask these questions. That goes against uh, this established belief. Both extremes do this to ideas, to questions. Both sides do this. I think the best way to go about things is to be in the center between those extremes and be a little bit more open-minded and actually break apart an idea on its own merit. What you get on either extreme of, of, of these, you know, extreme religion or extreme atheism, you have lazy thinking. You want to be told what to think. You want an easy to follow guide on what to think. This shit stifles creativity. It stops it in its tracks. And as we have more and more of this kind of thinking, this kind of philosophy on how to deal with new ideas, 
as this becomes more and more prevalent, the less creative we become. And that's a real shame. That's a real shame. Now, I think it's sad that uh, the smooth terrorists, uh, fake Sagan, whatever you want to call them, has went to uh, an Abrahamic belief system. I think it's sad I wasn't expecting him to go there. I was hoping that when he, you know, said that he had switched to, you know, he's he's no longer an atheist, that he was doing something a bit more independent. But he didn't. And that saddens me. But he... He did mention something in one of his videos that got me thinking a lot. It was about how... I mean, thinking about something that I've already given some thought to, I, I made a video about it, you know, just somewhat recently, about how, you know, there are, you, you can have monkeys on one side of a jungle that come up with, that, that do have some sort of a, a, a pattern, and then on the other side of the jungle, ones that have never contacted the one on this side of the jungle are now doing the same thing. Okay, we've got humans that do this same sort of, of thing as well. We've, we, have, we have artifacts from the past on one side of the world that are almost the same as on the other side of the world. We didn't have the ability to travel like we do now. So how does this phenomenon occur? You know, he had said, he, he was talking about the origin of consciousness. And that the established idea that uh, it is from our brain is similar to someone saying that the origin of a, a radio station is the crystal inside of a radio. You know, it was it was it was an interesting thing that he said there, and it got me thinking about how I've talked about. How if we were to find some way of breaking apart uh, human behavior, to have a, a thought map, a live thought map, um, and we were able to visually see these patterns of, of what people do, and even maybe what, what people move around, because what we do as humans on this planet, in this ecosystem, is we we're the ones that move matter around more than just about anything else, and we move it around in a very chaotic way. We're like, sort of like the chaos on the planet. And... I... I just sort of wonder, you know, are we, as humans, is our collective consciousness really some other living th is, is it a living thing? Is it something that's outside of individualism? And is there just one? Or are there several? Are there like 12 beings that we represent or something, right? And what got me gets me thinking further into this is when it comes to most religions that uh, have an anthropomorphic god, they always seem to focus on humans. There's never anything talked about as far as the, the rest of the animals on this planet. It's definitely never talked about in the sense of anything outside of this planet. But I wonder whether or not that might be the case because it is humans attempting to find labels for this being, this animal, this whatever it is that represents what humans do as a whole. And when people think that they're connecting to some 
a, a supreme being, higher power, or bullshit. That they're just connecting to the human consciousness. Whatever, ho however it is that we can eventually find it to be uh, uh, labeled. However it is that we are able to look at it. Like I said, if we eventually had the technology to be able to see a thought map or something, right? Um, there are just, there's, there's also... There are just, for me, there are too many things that happen that are just too extreme to just be a coincidence. Too many things that happen to us that is some sort of lesson that we're being taught. So, you know, some of the things that I think about in this regard are not established by other religions, and they're definitely not established by science. But there are also things that we can't make a definitive no, that's not the case. These are what-if questions, and even what-if statements. We should not be blocking creativity. We should not be blocking the what-ifs. Because we never know where one of the great ideas might come from. And if we're too busy saying, if it's not established, it's crap, then how in the world are we going to really move forward? Great ideas can come from anywhere. A great idea could come from a four-year-old. But if we're too busy judging this person on being a four-year-old, <laughs> how are we really going to progress in that regard anyway? <laughs> so.